Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to my channel. That's right guys, today we're going to learn a little bit about shingleback lizards, these awesome Australian skinks. If you're new to the channel, thanks so much for finding me. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button so we can all continue to join the adventure. Welcome to Critter Cam. Righto, today guys we're going to be talking about shingleback lizards and this is how I keep my shingleback lizards. Basically, I've got these indoor uh, planter boxes. Uh, they're just a raised garden bed, basically, and I've turned them into these indoor areas. Uh, I've got a light on in here. It's not to give a super amount of heat, but it's just to take the humidity out of the air. Um, especially this time of the year, we're heading into winter, which is a little bit crazy. Uh, nice astroturf on the bottom, and I've got this nice bit of dry hay on top. And these guys absolutely love it in here, these shinglebacks. So basically I've got a pair in there and I've got another pair that are absolutely smashing down the food and growing very quickly. These are a couple of babies from this year and they're growing very rapidly. Absolute gorgeous animals. How can you not fall in love with them? Well, let's uh, take a couple of these outside and talk a little bit more in detail. Right, one of my favorite skink species obviously of all times would have to be hands down and I mean, if you don't like these guys, then we're going to have to really talk about our friendship right now. Is these beauties right here. The shingleback lizards. That's right, guys. Check them out. Absolute drop dead gorgeous little guys. See that? Ooh, someone's a little bit grumpy, a little bit on the cold side. Now, shingleback lizards are absolutely amazing animals at the best of times. Now, these little beauties right here are absolutely not only just drop dead gorgeous but full of character I mean look at that that's as aggressive as a shingleback lizard gets and I mean cute and cuddly just like a teddy bear absolutely gorgeous now these beauties are absolutely amazing animals they uh, live on the other side on the western side of the Great Dividing Range they typically don't come down on the eastern side because of the humidity is a little bit too high and it causes them all sorts of skin issues and respiratory or RI infection so we're going to be very cautious about where we keep these guys so if you're on the east coast of Australia keeping them outside you need to maintain and try and get that humidity as low as possible to make sure that these guys don't end up with skin problems or you know like we said RIs respiratory infections so um, absolutely gorgeous animals they typically uh, pair bond and there's the other one over there making a bit of a dash for it they uh, typically pair bond which means that a male and female will mate and they typically pair the same pairing every year so that male will hunt down that female every year to uh, produce babies with that particular female now um, in recent times you can still see him making his way there in recent times uh, what's happened is a lot of research has been done to find that what would happen because in a lot of these areas there's a lot of traffic uh, a lot of um, highways basically cross through their natural home range which means a lot of these poor animals during a certain time of the year are getting destroyed by uh, traffic and big trucks and things. And um, that is absolutely horrific. And you can imagine if you take uh, one of the pair out, then that would leave the other, other uh, sex or the other individual not being able to find a mate for the rest of their life. But these guys will repair. That's right, they will repair. They won't just stay uh, monogamous forever, which is crazy enough. And um, I guess humans have... Uh, uh, humans are, are guilty of that also now um absolutely gorgeous little animals as i've said before absolutely full of character beautiful little faces short stumpy legs so these guys typically are a terrestrial species living on the ground dragging their bellies across the ground i mean they come in all ranges of colors from almost jet black right through to high yellows and white speckles uh, the western varieties typically have a lot of orange or rust colors through them are making them look absolutely gorgeous these guys are a central new south wales variety absolutely beautiful at the best of times they have this pine cone shaped tail uh, they have all sorts of names knob tailed lizards uh, shinglebacks because of the big scales on their backs look like shingles uh, you know sleepy lizards because typically they sit there they put their heads down they close their eyes so they look a little bit sleepy lazy lizards um, absolutely awesome animals they typically when you pick them up off the ground and uh, don't hold them correctly and have their legs dangling like this they'll stress out a bit and they'll usually urinate or defecate all over you that's not something that's very cool at all not at the best of times these guys have got absolutely the strongest jaws 
of any skinks. That's right, all the Taliquas. Absolutely grinding, crushing teeth. They've got the best jaws and the biggest muscles. Right behind the ears is the big jaw muscles. Now basically in the back of that jaw, right to the back of the jaw there, which is right here in the back, they have an elongated tooth. That tooth is used for crushing and breaking through really hard objects. Now with the blue tongue lizards, they use that for snail shells. So, you know, these guys live in arid areas, they still find snails and still have the opportunity to break through those snails to get that goopy stuff on the inside, which is just like when we crack open an oyster and get that big slimy thing in the corner and suck that down. I'm not a big fan of oysters, I can tell you that, but these guys absolutely go crazy for snails and slugs. Absolutely madness. The other cool thing about these particular lizards is uh, they're a vegetarian, so um, not specifically 100% vegetarian, but these guys will eat carrion when they have the opportunity. Um, on many occasions I've seen dead kangaroos and go for a bit of a poke and you might find one of these guys hanging around. Now, are they actually eating the meat or are they eating the bugs that are eating the meat? You know, there's a lot of questions to be asked, but in captivity, these guys will eat cat and dog food readily enough. And of course, most cat and dog food usually has some form of protein or animal-based protein being, you know, lamb, uh, beef, or even chicken. So these guys will eat just about anything. Absolutely awesome animals. You know, these guys will have two babies, two to four babies, depending on the area. Now, the reason why, now these particular animals right here are a year old. Now, when these babies are born and they're live birth, they come out in a clear membranous like sac, they tear their way out, they usually eat the sac, eat the little placenta, which is a big protein hit, gives them the first big kick in life. Now, um, they're, they're usually about half this size, so you can understand mum doesn't want to give birth to too many big babies because that's not going to be very uh, beneficial to mum, obviously, carrying around and pushing out these big babies. But some of the cool stuff about them is that when the mothers drop their babies, the babies will actually follow the mothers around. So when you go out into Western Australia or Western New South Wales or even just Central Australia and you see shingleback lizards, not only will you see males following females at certain times a year, but when the mothers are having babies, you'll see the mothers with the babies in tow. That's right, the babies will follow the mothers. Now, we can ask ourselves all sorts of reasons why this would be happening. Now, I really think that the mothers have no way of telling information to their offspring. In other words, they don't have the gift or the ability to speak like us humans, or they can't use hand gestures or anything like that, or even grunts and groans or meows or barks like dogs and cats. So how can these guys tell their offspring what they can and can't do or should and shouldn't do? So I believe that the mother leads the babies around, the babies follow the mother for at least the first six to eight months, and she shows them the right types of grasses and plants that they can eat. That's my belief. And therefore, they build up this little bit of a bond. But obviously, at some stage, the babies become big enough to be able to venture off and journey on life for themselves. That's pretty cool. Now, these guys are absolutely little machines. They love grazing and cruising around. And I mean, why not? Why wouldn't they be the most gorgeous animal in the universe? And in particular, I think these guys are probably the coolest skink available to the hobbyists. Now a lot of people say, how do I get a shingleback lizard? Why can't I find shingleback lizards for sale? That's because once you buy them, you fall in love with them and these guys live for 25 to 30 odd years. Now a very cool story about these particular lizards is um, I used to keep a lot of shinglebacks and a lot of blue tongues back in the early or mid 90s right through to 2000 a friend of mine i um we, we bred some shinglebacks i gave a friend of mine a baby shingleback lizard for christmas one year and um he was absolutely flabbergasted and amazed which is pretty cool and then here we are 15 years later he uh returns the favor and gives me a couple of these beautiful little babies that have come from that particular baby that I produced and gave to him that is pretty cool and usually that's what happens when you have really good friends you know you just breed and swap amongst each other and that's the coolest thing now I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about shingleback lizards make sure you give us a like hit me up on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and don't forget guys thanks so much for watching Critter Cam. we really appreciate it <laughs>